thanks again, guys, for joining us for one of the hardest episodes that we've had to do here at Real Fans Real Talk. I'm your host, Emma Marie, Trip Young, Eric, and the beautiful CJ joining us today. Four days ago, we learned about a tragic accident that took the lives of nine individuals. Two of those individuals being Gianna Bryant and Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant was undoubtedly one of the greatest humans and athletes of our generation. His legacy will live a life will last a lifetime. And though Kobe didn't think that he would la- live forever, he did create something that will. Mama mentality. How do you guys feel about just everything that's been going on this week? Well, I was shocked, you know, when I was with my brothers when it first had the news and when we saw it all over Twitter, I didn't think it was true. Yeah. You know, I was just like, no way. You know, he just um, was, we were just talking about him the other day, the day before, right. and it was just like a legend, Kobe Bryant. I, I couldn't believe it. Yeah. What did you guys think about it? Uh, shock, disbelief. Um I remember immediately jumping in the group chat that we're in. Yeah. Um, we didn't know what to believe. Yeah, we didn't know. <laughs> you know we had lost for words. Yeah. We were like all scrambling trying to figure out if it was true or not. Um, then even I'm, ESPN didn't even have it yeah, up. Yeah, ESPN didn't have it up for right probably about it. 15 minutns Yeah. Uh, as they were gathering the facts and uh, shocked immediately, as you mentioned, CJ thinking about the night before with LeBron passing him for third place yeah. and his last tweet obviously being con- congratulating yeah. LeBron. Mm-hmm. Um, then I immediately thought about his family. Um, we always saw him poor side with Gigi. Yeah. We knew he had three other daughters, beautiful wife. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's where my mind went with it, just thinking about his family. He was so young, 41 years old. And then, obviously, we find out more details as the day went on. Yeah, because, like you said, in the group chat, going crazy, looking like, wait a minute. And then, so I, and I saw it on, on TMZ, because I went to ESPN first. Mm-hmm. And when they didn't have it, I start, I just, like, you no, know, let me Google this. And I saw it on TMZ. You know, I still wasn't. Even when I saw it on TMZ, I was like, mm. so I went to Pro Sports Daily, and they had it up there. And I'm like, all right, I know Sport, Pro Sports Daily, you know, they, they, they be on their on they stuff. And I was just like, damn. And I called, the first person I called was my cousin, because uh, he's like the biggest Kobe wow. fan I know. Yeah. And I, like, and he was like, he was getting so many calls, because everybody knows how much of a Kobe fan he is. He was getting so many calls at that, at that time. It it was just it was just crazy, and it just it 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 really sucks because, you know, you know just from where Kobe started at and, and the situation that he had earlier on to just turn everything around and just showing how to how to be a good father, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, and showing how to be a good businessman, mm-hmm. you know, just and showing how to be a good person in general, yeah. you know, like I had. Y'all know I, I talk about Kobe all the time on the show because I wasn't a Kobe fan, but I I had I respected Kobe, and I respected Kobe even more after basketball for the stuff that yeah. he was doing. You know, especially you know being somebody that's in film, him winning that Oscar that that meant a lot to me. Right. So I, I just I gained a different level of respect for Kobe after basketball. Yeah. So it, it's it, it's just crazy, man. Yeah, I mean, um, so when I found out, I was sitting at brunch for my mom's birthday. So here we were just celebrating, you know, life, right? And so when we looked down, my I come from a basketball family. So, you know, my my sisters immediately my heart dropped cuz at first I thought it was a hoax, you know, we live in an, in an age where online people say crazy things. Yeah. Um so, yeah, when I first seen it, I just it really like it took my breath away for a moment. And I'm in a media group as well, so some of my friends work for Team Z Hollywood a lot, so I immediately was like I need confirmation. Um when I also found out that Gianna was a part of the nine just to die with his daughter, that was devastating. And I started crying like and it's crazy cuz again it it feels like we lost a relative like a lot of us think it's kind of weird sometimes people think it's weird to mourn the loss of a celebrity but i think that being 25 years old and kobe bryant was in the league for 20 years right so that's more that's a lot of my lifetime so you associate nba you know with kobe right. um growing up playing basketball I was number 24 because of him I used to study his spin move into the jumper everything like that so um it's it's just tragic and i think seeing the outpour of millions of people this week just spoke to what he's contributed to our generation off the court and you know like you said once he retired even if you didn't you know weren't a fan of him you got to see what he contributed to um these young women to yes. being a black male and setting the redefining what it is to be an athlete and to be a multi-faceted person winning an Oscar mm-hmm. um 
you know, we've been hearing his accolades all week, but he, this this was a league MVP, five titles. Um, I mean, he won an Oscar for his short film, and he was going to go on to do even more great things. Absolutely. So. Um, you brought up a great point, and again, in conversation that we've all had off air, to me, I think originally, because I was fighting back tears when I first heard the news, and I'm not going to lie, then I was really emotional when I found out his daughter was yeah. with him. Um, but then the more and more I thought about it, it, it really became clear to me why I felt the way I was feeling. And Kobe was a part of my childhood. Yeah. Yeah. Like, when Kobe went into the league, I was a preteen. So to me at the time, it was amazing to think that this high school kid is just going to go to the NBA. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you're naive. You don't know much about the game, but you know enough to realize this is significant. A 17, 18 year old is going to go straight to the league. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we weren't talking about a seven footer. We were talking about a guard that was doing it. Yeah. And so as he grew as a young man into a man, as Tripp said, and he had issues with the media at times, him and Shaq didn't always get along. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But as he got older, he continued to mature and become this real, like, genuine guy that you could look up to. Mm -hmm. um, he wasn't my favorite all-time basketball player, but again, it was a piece of my childhood that I saw die yeah. at that moment. Yeah. And to me, it, it'll never be the same. The NBA is the one league that we always get to see the older statesmen stick around the game. We still yeah. see Bill Russell to this yeah. day, right? Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan's a part owner. Right. We see all these legends that are Larry part of the Bird, game. Magic. Right, Larry Bird, Magic. Mm -hmm. Jerry West. Right. <laughs> and so Kobe was supposed to do that, too. Yeah. Kobe, yep. we just sat here a few weeks ago and we talked about ownership and hopefully LeBron becomes an owner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kobe would have been one of those guys in line. The relationship he had with the Lakers, mm -hmm. at some point he was going to work in that front office and maybe even move on into Absolutely. ownership. Yeah. And we, we get robbed of that. And then obviously his daughter, mm -hmm. yeah. 13 years old, she had the mama mentality. Yeah. Yep. And we won't get to see her grow into a young woman and everything that was in front of her. Yeah. And, and that's the thing I think I respect most. You know, and I, it, it's just so crazy with the with the whole hashtag, you know, girl dad. You know, like it, it means a lot to me just because of how, how much black men get bashed. You know, what I'm saying when it comes to fatherhood and dealing with family, yeah, and and it's just, like that. That's always crazy to me because my circle, and I have a couple of them are single fathers too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I I hate that when I when I when I hear that, that stereotype. Yeah, yeah, and that's that stigma. So just to see how he was representing and just being a good father yeah. and then, you know, knowing like I said, you know, and, and it, I, I gotta include Eric in this too, you know what I'm saying? Just <laughs> when yeah. 'cause I like I I, I give my, my friends a lot of respect that are good fathers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so it just it it just means a lot. It um you know, when we were in the group chat, obviously I immediately thought, just even speaking to you, having two young girls, mm -hmm. right? Um, it girl made, dad. Yeah, your girl dad. Yeah, your girl dad. It made me, um, I went upstairs and I, man, I, I got so emotional. I went upstairs and I said to my father, and I just told him, one, I appreciate him being my first coach, you know, life coach and just coach on the, on the court. So my father used to wake me up 5 a.m. I used to take 500 jump shots before school, and he he put that mama mentality in, into me. So I, I see young, you know, Gianna, and I see myself, too. Right. So to just think, I had the experience of go D1 for, for a sport, and she didn't even get to do her high school varsity team. Right. Yeah. Um, and I told my father, I said, you know, when I was watching the clips of Kobe and his daughter sitting on the court and him just teaching her, I said that, it's kind of in, indescribable to explain how it feels to be a woman and your father be your first coach. Right. And then that transcended to coaching you in life. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, even on the podcast, I'm always telling you guys little things that my father said right. to me. Um, but I relate everything to basketball. And so... That was your first bond. Yeah. yeah. And especially because, you know, a lot of people, when you are... When your father is a great athlete, people always want them to have sons. Mm -hmm. Right. So to pass that legacy. So I love yeah. <laughs> how tough, you know, Gianna was in, in just being confident that she would carry that Bryant, you know, legacy. Mm -hmm. um, she, man, wanted this, to, she wanted to go to UConn. Yeah. yeah. It's play. just big. She had big dreams, you mm -hmm. know? I remember I saw a clip and um, a reporter was interviewing Kobe saying, oh... Did you wish you had like a son to bring out the legacy? And John's like, no, 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 I got it, I got yeah. it, I got she, this. She said, that's what what I'm here for. Yeah, yeah. that's what I'm here yeah. for. You know, I just seeing the clips, like you said, it's just seeing the bond that they had. They would always go to the games together. You know, they would just chill out courtside, and he would always teach her different like um, skills and stuff. I it just breaks my heart to see that you know they had to pass away like that. Yeah, you know. And he, um, I mean, we we. What's making it even tougher 
like I'm glad that we've had a couple of days to kind of yeah. let it settle in. Yeah. But we keep seeing all of these clips that yeah. just highlight who oh, Kobe was. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, him talking in the interview two years ago, why he takes the helicopters. Yeah. Because he was like, you know, I wanted to still keep my routine of working out in the morning, yeah. but I didn't want to rob myself of family time. I wanted yeah. to be able to get back for the school plays. And he's like, jump in the carpool line to pick up my daughters. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, he wanted to be there for that. Um, I saw a great clip earlier today because we saw the emotions of all the NBA players, mm. right? Yeah. Everyone took it hard. Like Kyrie immediately left the garden on Sunday when yeah. he heard the news. Yeah. Um, he, was in, I, he was just with Kobe all summer right, working, was, working out. Yeah. Kobe, uh, Jason Tatum. Yeah. Uh, Ante Zakumbo, who talked about everything he learned from Kobe just working with him for one summer. Mm -hmm. There's a clip circulating now where Kobe is literally in a classroom with about 12 young players breaking out a game, going, like, really coaching them through stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it shows, like, he, I think we had him all wrong. Like, for a long time, the, the perception of Kobe was he's a selfish teammate. He's only worried about himself. Yeah. He, he's not getting along with certain guys. But then to see the way he was mentoring guys, and LeBron yeah. talks about the relationship they had off the court. Yeah. Like, it was the opposite. Kobe was trying to move the game forward the best way possible. Yeah. And it's, sorry, I'm going to cut you off. It's interesting you say that because I, when I think about a true leader and someone who's a trailblazer, I think about those who make people around you better. And you're right, because I think people, um, you know, my actually one of my managers said to me she wasn't a fan because she thought he was arrogant. And then in his death, she started seeing the videos of other players saying how he helped them. Yeah. And so when I think about who he made better around him, I'm like, we definitely did have him, you know, yeah. wrong in that regard. Um, but in the same token, I do think that he is also an example of giving someone their flowers when they were present. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Because when we look at someone like Nipsey, who passed away um, and his album sales or his streamings went up and people who weren't fans before became fans. Right. Yeah. But with Kobe, just the night before, you know, LeBron is sitting here telling him while he's alive, like this guy mentored me. I, right. I'm, you know, praising who he is. Yeah. And then he passed away. So. I'm happy that he knew what he meant to our culture and to the game of basketball. And it's good that LeBron said that um, the post that he recently had on social media said that he was going to continue his legacy. Mm -hmm. You know, I just felt like, you know, Kobe went and taught him everything that he knew. So the fact that LeBron is on the Lakers now, he yeah. will continue the legacy, Wild. you yeah. know? And I, I think even, you know, with as far as the you know people, you know, th with the selfishness and all of that, like we we can't forget that Kobe also came into the league at seventeen years right. old. Yeah. So young. So naturally, yeah. he's gonna be by himself. He was trying mm -hmm. to adjust. Yeah. You know. So you know, and you know, so that's that's one adjustment. And then too, again, when everybody around you is able to do things that you can't do because you're only seventeen years old, naturally, he's gonna be by himself. Yeah. So yeah, when you by yourself, all right, I'm just gonna take this time. I'm gonna put it into being better than whoever the best is right now. I'm gonna be better. Than them, so yeah. So sometimes, you know, I guess maybe you can get that that misconception. Yeah. But I I do think that as he got older, that's when you kind of saw the change in Kobe to where it was now. It's about all right. I'm here, and I'm I'm already etched in stone. So now, you know what? Let me pass on this game right. to to whoever's coming up after me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was growth in that, and I'm I'm glad you brought that part up. Um, because he said in one of his interviews that the reason why he created the idea of Black Mamba was because he said, I had to separate myself. And he felt like being a young star, right? He was dealing with the pressures of being Kobe Bryant and he wanted to have kind of that alter ego. So when he stepped on the court, he was Black Mamba and he said yeah. that Kobe Bryant has to deal with the personal situations, yeah. the relationship, the news, the allegations, the pressures that come with being a professional athlete, but the Black Mamba was him going onto the court to destroy. Exactly. So, you know, that's, again, like him separating himself, even yeah. literally, for yeah. him for himself to get And we don't see everything no. No. At, the, at the same time. But we were just starting to see his personality. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. now. The, you know, him at his daughter's games, at the Nets game, which is probably one of my favorite clips. Yeah. When you see him breaking down the game, and she gets it as well as he's talking to her. Um, the commercial with Jalen Rose, when he's making fun of dropping the 81 yeah, points oh on you know, <laughs> Like, we were starting to see his personality, yeah. his personality yeah. and who Kobe really was as a man outside yeah. of just because a basketball we, we, player. Because, because he doesn't have to be the black mamba. Right. That's for basketball. Yeah. So now when we, we get to see Kobe, 
oh, he's actually a pretty cool dude. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know and he was enjoying retirement. I felt like he was like, I finally get to, I think, start being more of a present father because they were on, on the go. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And, you know, one thing I just wanted to touch on when you were saying his career has transcended from him being that very confident, you know, uh, athlete to, I'm going to pass this over. He said in one of his interviews that um, torches aren't passed, they're earned. And so I think some people had a hard time dealing with him because he made you earn that. And he yeah. said there was a lot of young guys that he went against that was like, look, I don't need to, like, he didn't baby them. He was like, you got to earn it. You yeah. know, so I think Gianna earned it. And I think that, you know, Le LeBron James earned it. Definitely. So Can, can, we, can, we, can we do this? Because um, we, we gonna, I want to I wanna get into the tribute at the Garden uh, mm -hmm. really quick. We're going to take a quick break. But um, can we can we get a cup for Kobe right now? Can we raise a glass to to, to the Black Mamba? Absolutely. We, we, we got yes. the ball back. Shout out to Rashida. We got the ball back. Mm -hmm. It's the first ball we had in in the new year, and it's only Rashida's fitting. Been that. out here working so hard. We, exactly. we, appreciate, we appreciate you taking the time <laughs> to kick it with us today, Rashida. Exactly. You know. Great. But we gotta we gotta do something. We gotta <laughs> put these in the air for Kobe. Take a drink for Kobe. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, man. Y'all hold y'all hold glasses up for the for the Black Mamba. For the gold. All right, and and again, and I and I don't want to I don't want to forget because it wasn't just Kobe and Gigi on Absolutely the flight. Absolutely not. So we're gonna raise these these cups to Back everybody. To family to the Chesters. Yes. The oh, that was on the, yes. Yes. The, the Mamba Academy took a major major loss. Not only with Kobe and Gianna, but she had three teammates. On, yes. On the and also for the Brian well. family, right. Vanessa and the kids. Yep. Exactly. So this is for you, Kobe, and everybody else. Yes. Love you. Miss you. Cliff, when you're ready, you can drop that MSG tribute. They had the Lakers. And the uh, Nets coming up here on MSG. This is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Live from the camp. Hey. Come on, live. Live the camp. Uh huh. This is Hi, Real yeah. Fans Real Talk. Talk. Real Fans Real Talk. We as real as you thought. Real Fans.